And welcome allies! We have seen a trailer for something called Ghostbusters Afterlife, and you're gonna find out why we've been fawning. Okay, here we go. You're a great mom. I don't know. I'm fine with Trevor. But with Phoebe. She really hard with the key. Oh, the wonderful Annie Potts. You're saying he left us nothing? Well, I wouldn't say nothing. You went with the station wagon? It's the only one that had an engine. <laughs> Who wouldn't want to be a kid driving around right. in Ecto-1? What is happening here? Somehow. See, I think that... The, could that be Bill Murray? Where? The, the tea shop owner who was trying to keep the wall from shaking. I missed it. Maybe it's the apocalypse. How did you, how did you miss it? I, did, I didn't notice if it could be him. Egon came out here for a reason. Egon came out. So they've confirmed that Egon is the... Grandfather. Yeah. This is fun. I like. You guys hear that? Something's coming. Very zoolish. What thing? Who's that? There's the dog. Yeah, it's Terror Dog. It's definitely Zool. Not Slimer. No, definitely not. Ghostbusters, we're ready to believe you. That's Ray. We're closed. Well, clearly, you heard his voice. Well, not only that, but it's the occult bookstore. Wow, I I love it. I, I'm very excited. I now I also should. Uh, say that right about the same time there were images released of the toys associated with the movie. Yes, I saw some that of them. as well. And um, it does show uh, Dan Aykroyd and, and Peter Venk. You know, it shows that bunch in the Ghostbusters outfit. So mm -hmm. at some point, they're going to throw down with the young kids busting ghosts. We, I, I think we know that based on the toys. So I think what we're going to get is exactly what I thought we were going to get. And I think we've spoken briefly about this before prior to the pandemic and everything, that it looks to me like we're going to get a proper handoff, which is that uh, the old guys are going to come back to settle the score with Gozer one more time, and uh, the kids are going to help out, and you know they'll be left holding the keys to the kingdom, so to speak. Well, here's my feeling about it, and if you saw the toxic fandom video part thing that we did in in, in the uh, masters of the masters universe, of the universe they released a ghostbusters movie that not too many people liked and there was a bunch of backlash on it and i really don't understand the backlash because there was a movie and if you didn't want to watch it you didn't want to watch it i had no issue with it because you know if you put ghostbusters on a garbage can i'm gonna sit in front of it and stare have, at it for an hour I have and to a half be honest i never watched it you never watched I it? I never saw it. And, I, and I'll tell you why. It had nothing to do with the fact that there was four women. I didn't care about yeah, that. Yeah, I don't know. That, that made no difference to me. The reason I didn't watch it is because it was not a continuation of the original story. I can understand and that. And for me, the nostal with the nostalgia gone, why did I care? Because it's I had, Ghostbusters. But I, I saw no emotional connection to it because the guys weren't there. If, if, that same, if the same movie would have been made... But would have the script would have been done where they incorporated a handoff to those women? Fine, I'd have watched it all day long. Hmm. I, it, to me, I, I'm not foolish enough to believe that we can continue to have a hundred more movies with Dan Aykroyd and, and 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 you know these guys. They're they're getting old. I mean, that's just the way it is. And I and I, I, I feel bad, but saying that. But at the same time, I mean, Peter Cullen. At the day we're filming this, it's his birthday. He turns eighty today. Now, we're not going to have Peter forever. 
But certainly, you know, Optimus Prime is going to go on mm -hmm. and live on once Peter is gone. You know, and that people need to get used to that idea. I don't think they're doing one more Indiana Jones movie. No one can tell me that that franchise isn't going to continue once Harrison Ford is not donning the fedora. It's going to continue, guys. It makes too much money. They're not going to let it go. They're not going to let it die. Somebody else will pick up the hat and the whip when Harrison is done. That's just the way it's going to be. The same holds true for the Ghostbusters. So it didn't bother me that there were women. It's just that they, because they weren't continuing the story, they weren't doing a proper handoff, I just didn't care. And I think that they, I think you'll find that, was, that if people were being honest, that was their problem with the film, is that it wasn't a continuation, and because there wasn't any... I don't feel that it honored the original film or the original source material, they just didn't care. And they blamed it on whatever because they didn't know how to articulate that, perhaps. Possibly. See, I really didn't care because I got proton packs and ghosts. And sure. That's what I wanted to see, proton packs and ghosts. I knew going into it, it wasn't going to be a continuation. But I still wanted to see the proton packs and, and ghosts. And that's valid. It's, it's absolutely valid. You know, as, as, I, as I stated in the, in the uh, Masters of the Universe review, there's nothing wrong with enjoying something or not enjoying something. Right. The, 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 what's wrong is how you respond to it if it's a negative thing. You know, it's, if, if you're going to be a jerk, then, you know, th there's no good coming of that. Well, and moving on from that, I think the only reason why I didn't care for the Ghostbuster, the, the other Ghostbusters movie, is Bill Murray dies. And I think that might have been his own suggestion. It's like, just kill me in this movie. Kill me in this movie, and then we'll go on from there and we'll figure it out. I'm going on record right now. Venkman's going to die in this movie. Oh, you think? Uh-huh. Do you want to make a bet? Let's bet. Let's bet in front of the... In front, in front of the Allies? Yeah, in front of the Allies. I got we, five bucks as Venkman need, does. Oh, that, that's monetary. We need to do something special. This needs to be a special... We'll get back to the bet, because we are going to come up with something special, because we got to benefit the... We gotta benefit the allies. Venkman's gonna get whacked. But we gotta benefit the allies, and me handing you five bucks or you handing me five bucks isn't isn't ally worthy. We gotta do something that's ally worthy. Oh really? Yes. Yeah, so, so we're gonna be thinking about this, and after the movie, we'll find out who's going to uh, do the ally worthy thing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That would be you. Lies. You know what they say about lies. This isn't even that that forum. Well, lies make Egon cry. Oh. But, anyway. <laughs> but anyway, looking at the movie, it makes me wonder, did Janine marry Louis Tully or did she marry Egon? I don't know that she did either of those things. Really? Uh, my thought, what if she's the one that's giving them the keys to the house? Maybe she was the executor the of... The landlord. The executor of Egon's ah, will or something that makes like sense. that. Mm. But who married Egon for him to have grandchildren? Good question. Because therein lies another question. Because wouldn't you think that, that Annie Potts would have a bigger role than just you know, you'd see more of her? If indeed if indeed she's the grandmother, you know what I mean? You'd expect her to be around more. So that's why I'm saying I don't think that it's her. Well, right now she's getting more screen time than any of the other original cast, and that's just in the preview. So it's well, leaving a little Easter egg there. You it know, is, you get to come up is. with your own theory. Uh, that's a, it's a good point. I, we'll see what happens there. I, I'll be curious to see how they incorporate her in. And I'm curious to see where Paul Rudd fits in. I think Paul Rudd is going to be the vehicle that we see everything happen. Like he gives the, he gives the audience a character to follow around. That's it. completely possible. As far yeah. as the adult. Now, as far as the kids, it plays to us being children because we loved that movie when we were kids. We did. Who wouldn't want to drive around an Ecto-1 and use a proton pack? Well, every, everyone wants to, and I think that there's there's such a huge... Uh, so uh, more than others! Yeah. Well, there's such a huge fan base for it. I mean, there's there's plenty of people, uh, I mean, Hole in the Ground Productions, uh, and they are actually local to us, is one of the uh, major uh, prop makers of replica proton packs out there. So, uh, you didn't know that, did you? No, I did. Oh, okay. No, so that, they yeah, were in the, the Carlisle Parade. Yeah, so, I mean, they, they have uh, they have some beautiful proton packs. Eric does a wonderful job. Uh, and uh, there's actually a local fan group that has an Ecto-1. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, we're, we're lucky, at least here. You know, we could conceivably... 
Hmm. Reaching out and doing things. Yeah, yeah. There was a movie coming out. Maybe we should do that. Maybe hmm. we should. Maybe hmm. we should. Yeah. But one thing that I loved about Ghostbusters is they made me. If not for Ghostbusters, um, I would not believe in ghosts. I don't believe in ghosts because of Ghostbusters, because one thing that I always wanted to do was become a Ghostbuster, and if ghosts exist, I would not be sitting next to you right now. I'd be living in a firehouse with, with, with a proton pack and trying to figure out how to get the, the, the hearse running again or the ambulance running again so we can go out and drive around the streets of New York or possibly Pennsylvania or New Mexico, wherever they wanted me to bust ghosts. Send help, please. Hey, hey I make logical sense. Adrian, who wouldn't want to? Who wouldn't want to be a Ghostbuster? Good God. Anyway, uh, for me, I absolutely want to see the film. I'm very excited. I thought the trailer was great. And, so did uh, I. There are three things that you need to make a really, really good Ghostbuster movie. Three things. And what's that? One is the action. Mm -hmm. You need to have it be action enough. One is a fear element. Without the fear element, you're not going to cross over and make it enjoyable. The third, comedy and a soundtrack. I think you had a little bit of the comedy with the little, the little, the mini Stay Puffs. You did, but think of every lighthearted scene in all the other Ghostbusters movies, and what musical sound bite did you hear every time there was a little lighthearted? It was that piano. Yeah, it was that... Yeah. That made it happy, so you knew going into it that was going to... And then they changed the tone of the music to the yeah. darker thing. So yeah. if they have a really good soundtrack to evolve and push some of the things forward, yeah. you're going to have your action, scary, funny movie that Ghostbusters was meant to be. Yeah, definitely. So... That comes out November. I, I, I know I'm very excited to see it. I know we'll be there. Yeah, around Thanksgiving, we're probably going to watch it. If you're local to the together. area, we hope to see you at the movie theater when we're there watching it. And until then, who are you going to call? Well, definitely not us. Not no, not no. But you can watch us online. Yes. Like, share, subscribe. See you next time. When I think about it, you know it always makes me smile.